Hey everybody, Sean here, and I hope you're doing well. So the riddle of the day is, what's worse than going to hell? You think, surely nothing's worse than that. But what's worse than going to hell is going to hell when you thought you were going to heaven. In the book of Matthew, Jesus is very clear that many would stand before him on judgment day and call him Lord. The majority of the world will not be calling Jesus Lord on Judgment Day. Only those who think they are saved will do this. And Jesus says that many of these people that call him Lord will even proclaim to have prophesied, cast out demons, and done miracles in his name, yet Jesus never knew them, which means that he never had an intimate, born-again relationship with them, and they will spend eternity in hell. 2 Corinthians 13.5 tells us to examine ourselves to see if we are in the faith, test ourselves, and then comes a powerful statement. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you, unless, of course, you fail the test? You see, Paul was the one that introduced these people to Christ, but in verse 3, we see that they are demanding proof that Christ is speaking through him, even though Paul has visited them twice already. So he's asking them if they still believe what they believed when Paul first introduced them to Jesus, or if upon examining themselves, perhaps their trust has been in someone or something else. They can't reject Paul as a false apostle unless they also reject Christ as false in themselves as well. So Paul is asking, is Christ truly in them? And we can ask ourselves that same question. I'm sure many of you share my story. You went to church for much of your life, believed all the basic doctrines of Jesus and the cross, and even helped out at church events. Maybe even had a father who was a pastor. So, of course, you think you're a saved Christian. That's what I thought. But, like with myself, it wasn't until later in your life that God allowed you to understand what sin was and convicted you of it. Allowed you to understand that the end result of sin was hell for eternity. You realized that you deserved hell and that there was nothing you could do to make things right except put your faith in Christ's sacrifice on the cross for you. And when you did that, life changed. I mean, how could it not? The creator of all that exists puts his Holy Spirit in you and you think nothing's going to change? The biggest passion God put on my heart from when I was born again was to preach the gospel, not only to non-believers, but especially to believers. Because at one point, I thought I was saved, but sadly, I wasn't. So how many people must be in church that were the same as I once was? We all have our own stories of how we came to be saved, but I become very concerned when a person can't say when they were born again. It doesn't matter how good of a life you may have lived before you were saved, there's going to be a noticeable change when God's Spirit indwells you. One of the YouTubers on this thumbnail gave his testimony and said that he can't really pinpoint a time that he was saved. It kind of developed naturally, he says. I don't know whether he's saved or not. I really hope he is. But that kind of testimony concerns me. I know a pastor of a large church in Canada that is passionate for God. But he told me that it wasn't until years later when attending a meeting in America that he realized he wasn't actually born again and he truly surrendered his life to God then, and his life changed from the inside out. How many pastors today are in the same situation and haven't realized this yet? How many people have an intellectual faith and knowledge about God, but not a saving faith? Did you know that different studies in America show that only between 10 and 30 percent of Christians say they've read the entire Bible at least once? Before I was born again, I read the Bible because I thought it was the right thing to do. But after I was born again, I had a passion to read God's Word, and it actually made sense for the first time. I think that's one way we can test ourselves, as it says in 2 Corinthians 13. Do I have a passion to read God's Word? If not, why not? Another question is, Was there a time in my life when my feelings about sin suddenly changed? 
Before I was born again, I did drugs every day, slept around, and swore like a trucker. After I was born again, I had no desire for any of that. It just stopped. 1 John 3, 9 tells us that no one born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in him. He cannot go on sinning because he has been born of God. You could say, being born again. He cannot, he can't, it's not possible for a born-again believer to continue in whatever sin they had before they were born again. This is powerful and another way God shows his life-changing power in us. Like I mentioned earlier, I used to swear like a biker and the morning after the evening I was saved, I turned on South Park out of habit. I was disgusted with it and turned it off after a few minutes, but I was confused why my favorite show suddenly horrified me. I went to speak and said, holy f f but the swear wood would not come out. I believe that's a proof of not being able to continue in sin and God being in total control. Like 1 John 5.13 says, we can know that we have eternal life. Can you remember a time in your life when sin suddenly seemed really bad? Do Christians end up sinning again? Yep, I think most of us do. But at that time of salvation, God's word tells us that it's not even possible to continue in sin. So what's worse than going to hell? Someone going to hell when they thought they were going to heaven. Allow me to finish by asking you this. If you died today, do you think you'd go to heaven? Fact is, we've all broken God's Ten Commandments and breaking God's law is called sin. 1 John 3, 4 tells us that sin is transgression of the law. Let's go through a few of those commandments. Ever told a lie? It only takes one to make someone a liar. Ever taken something that wasn't yours, even if it's small? That makes you a thief. Ever said, oh my God, or Jesus Christ in a moment of anger? That's called taking the Lord's name in vain. How about having a dirty thought? God is so perfect and holy that even thinking lustful things is considered adultery of the heart to him. And that's only four of the Ten Commandments. The penalty for sin is death, and God's prison, so to speak, is hell and it's forever. And just like in a court of law, a good judge cannot overlook someone's crime, God will not overlook ours. But also like in a court of law, if the fine is paid, the judge can legally let you go, even though you're guilty. If we died today and stood before God, we'd all be guilty of breaking his laws. That's where Jesus comes in. He lived a sinless life and took the death penalty on our behalf. So just like someone paying your fine in court, Jesus paid our fine to God with his life. John 3.16 says that God loved us so much that he gave his one and only son and that whoever believes in him, that is, commits to Jesus, will not get what they deserve, but shall have everlasting life. Ephesians 2, 8 to 9 tells us that we are saved by grace through faith in Christ and not of works. There's nothing we can do to earn God's forgiveness. It's his gift to us. So if you aren't sure that you'd go to heaven today, then admit to God that you're sorry for breaking his laws. Admit that you deserve punishment for this and confess that you believe Jesus Christ has paid your fine on the cross, that you're thankful and would do anything for God if he'll forgive you. There's no special words, just be honest with God. He knows everything anyways. If you're sincere about that, then scripture says that you will become a new creation. The old you will be gone and the new will come. You will be born again and with God's spirit now living inside you, you're gonna notice some definite changes in your life. Don't wait another minute because no one is guaranteed they'll see tomorrow. We're gonna leave it here for today, but as always, feel free to leave your thoughts and comments below. And until next time, take care and God bless.